right. Um, so what I want to do today is go into a uh, new composition. So we'll just click on that, or you can go to composition new. And I'm going to just name this uh, motion graphics. Um, well, let, let, give it a zero two. Everything else should be fine. The custom preset is okay. Um, if you want to pick something else, you know, that's fine too. We're just playing around with, uh, with After Effects today, okay? So um, what I want to do is under the presets, I'm going to look for the HD 720, 29.97, all right? And everything else should be the same. Your duration uh, is about 30 seconds. You know, we're probably not going to do that much, but leave it there and hit OK. All right, so it creates this um, uh, composition for us here. <clears throat> and let me hide this. OK, so what I want to do today is to play around with some images, OK? And then normally when I create um, graphics for After Effects, I do it in Photoshop and then bring it in here, OK? But we can play around in After Effects by itself also, and we're going to use the shape tool, the rectangle tool, okay, which is at the, underneath the animation. If you don't see it, it should be underneath one of these. So just click and hold right there and look for the rectangle tool, okay? We're going to do a few different things today that will, um, will help us out, okay, so to make some cool effects. So the first thing is that um, last week we did like those circles kind of like popping in and fading away. Um, and we've done some stuff with masking. So what I'm going to do is just make like a rectangle. And uh, I'll leave it red for now. But I'm going to take off the stroke. And by clicking on the word stroke and going with the none option, which is the white rectangle with the red line, just click on that and hit OK. And what that does, it gets rid of the line that goes around the stroke, okay? So your rectangle could be any size. It doesn't have to be exactly like mine, like this. The whole process is going to be the same way, right? Now I have this um, red bar here. If I want to change the fill or the color, so the first thing is fill. And you have none also here. You have a solid color, which is what it is now. You have a linear gradient and a radial gradient. Just so you know what a linear gradient looks like. It looks like that. Okay. And uh, that's a normal gradient, which you can move, uh, hit OK, for example, and you can move uh, this so it can affect the gradient however you want. You can change its direction. All right. We're not going to do this. This is just, I'm just showing you what we can, we can do. And then uh, radial gradient is this one where it goes from the middle and, oh, sorry, hit OK. And you can change that. Uh, if you change the angles, it doesn't really matter because it's a circle. Okay. To change the color in either the radial or the linear, you just click on this here, okay, on the actual little um, preview of it. And you have these two uh, little indicators here that can change the color. So, for example, if I go to red, on this first one, it turns red in the middle, okay? And you can move these uh, little indicators however you want to intensify how much red and how little uh, of the other color it is. Right now the other color is black, so if I select this one here and change it to, let's say, like a a yellow, okay, like that, you can do that. You can also move this, and uh, this also kind of like uh, fixes some things, but um, if you click here in an empty area, it'll create another little indicator, and then you can change that one to a different color. So let's say, oh, you can also move them around. Let's say I want the yellow in the middle, and the red at the end outside, so it looks like a sun or something, some kind of flash. Again, you can change that right there, all right? If you don't like this white one anymore, you can always just hit delete and it'll go away. But again, if you just hit an empty area, you can do that. I can do one right here in the middle. <coughs> um, and normally when you do the in the middle of like between two colors, like here, I'll delete this one, like right about here. Um, you can select a range, but then you can just change it to something else. Let's say orange, like in the orange area, more like that. And that's so brown. And then play around with this. And this, again, same thing in Photoshop. So you can 
do whatever you want. You can if you drag it off like I just did, like that, it'll delete it too. So you don't have to hit that button. Okay. But that's how it works. Okay. The linear gradient works the same exact way. This one I'm gonna delete. Uh, so you just change the color to whatever you want. I'll put red back here. And again, you can change. Oh, once you hit OK, you can change the angle of that too. So it's like more like this or whatever you want. Okay. Um, but for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to put it back to solid. I'm sorry. Uh, under the word fill, I'm going to put it to solid. So it's just a solid red. And then if I choose to go back and maybe change it, I will. Okay. Um, but those are the things that we can do in order to change the shape color. Okay, so fill is for the inside of the shape. The the box next to it is for how it looks, whether it's a solid or a gradient. Stroke is for the outside, the outline, outside line. And then this box does the same thing too, where you can put uh, a color or a gradient, however you want to. Okay, so what I want to do now is I want to do something where uh, this, let me get my move tool. Okay, I'm going to place it like right in the middle, or somewhere in the middle. And I want to do something where it kind of appears. All right. Now I could do one thing where if I were to grab the edge of here, see what happens? I can extend it like this. All right. So I have that option. Same thing this way. So I can change the shape on the fly. If you grab the corners, it goes in all directions, all right? Um, I want to create a mask over this, all right? So with the shape layer selected, I'm going to select that same rectangle tool that we did before, all right? And I'm going to draw a mask over it, okay? Now it comes out red. Hold on a second. We'll use the pin tool instead, okay? Let's use the pin tool, or right, which is right next to that. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box or another rectangle. And I want a mask. Why is it not showing a mask? Hold on a second. I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> Bless you, I think. Let me just make sure I'm doing this right. There it goes. Okay, let's do this. So on the shape layer, okay, you're going to go uh, hold down Control Shift and press the letter C as in cat. And we're going to put that into a pre comp. And we're going to call this, um, let's call this like uh, stripe. I don't know what else to call it. Stripe for now. And now it's inside a pre comp. Now I'm going to use the rectangle tool. Okay. And I want to click and drag. As soon as you click, you'll see the rectangle disappear. But what I want you to do is click and drag it so it appears on like this, all the way around it. Okay. We're creating a mask. And a mask, what it does is that it, cuts out things that we don't want to see or things that we do want to see. It just cuts out something, either the, the image uh, of the, um, the background or the, the main subject, whatever it is, it could be um, added or removed. Okay, so I have this. I'm going to grab my move tool, okay? And I want to show you what it does here before I actually do any kind of animation on it. So if I go over and select the mask, you may have to like click it a few times, but what I want to do is grab this. And if, uh, if I go backwards, you see that it removes this. Okay. So this is something similar we did when we did the, uh, the news report. Okay. When we had something just appear like that. All right. So what I want to do is like, if I move that edge all the way to the back, it removes everything. If I move it forward, it reveals everything. So I want to know, how long I need. I'm going to do maybe about four seconds. So if I go to my four second mark, and if you come over to your mask one right here, down at the bottom, if you don't see this, just click on the little uh, arrow on the side, and you're going to see where it says mask, and there's mask one, which is the one we just created. 
open that up. And if you, again, if you grab this, you'll see that uh, nothing is really moving here. That's because it's not a, uh, a position that's moving or a scale or rotate. It's the mask path right here. So if I go to my four second mark and turn on the stopwatch for mask path, this is going to set a mark for how this behaves. Okay. So again, all I want, and if you grab everything by accident, just click out and then click again on the, this edge here on the right side, and then you can move it. And if you hold on shift, it'll move perfectly straight to the left. Okay. But just don't forget to move your mouse or your indicator someplace else. So I'm going to move it to about, uh, one second mark right there. And I'm going to grab this now. Hold on shift. It'll move over straight and horizontally. Okay. Oh, I think I undid. Hold on a second. Let me do that again. I press um, control Z too many times. Okay. Go back to the one minute mark or one second mark. Okay. And then I'm going to move this. Sorry, not the whole thing. There you go move it across and then on your mask path shape right here you'll see that there's two keyframes and then what it does it opens up like that okay so let me start that over so you can see where i did it okay so always keep in mind that sometimes not not sometimes most of the time in after effects it's best to work backwards like know where it's supposed to end and then go back to the beginning to do it um and so I'm going to grab that. Oh, oh sorry. Uh, set a key right there. So let's turn on the stopwatch. And then I'm going to grab this and move it backwards. No, oh, sorry. Go to your frame first. Go to your one minute, one second mark. And then grab this. Go all the way back. And then um, After Effects will automatically set the second key for you. Our second key is technically our first key, but that's because we're working backwards. So when we hit uh, scrub, we'll see that it reveals the rectangle. Now, if you cut in the middle here, we're not going to add anything uh, as far as key ticks are concerned, but we are going to change how this looks. Uh, if I hit play, I want you to see this real quick. It's going to probably come in kind of slowly, just like that. That's fine. And, um, you know, if we add the blur effect here, it may uh, get rid of that hard edge. Not really. See, it's still there. Okay. But I want to feather this. Okay. So if you don't understand what feathering means, basically it's kind of like fading out the edges a little bit. So feathering is done in drawing when you kind of like make shadows. And so you have a hard shadow and then it gets softer and softer as it goes away. That's feathering. Okay. In Photoshop, we do the same thing. Right here in our masks, we have mask feather. Okay. Now we can animate this because there's a stopwatch next to it. Anytime you see uh, something blue, it's most of the time it's you can animate. Uh, but all I need to do is just add a feather. So if you go uh, right now, it's linked because the top and bottom are linked to the left and right sides of the mask. Okay, uh, we can leave it alone, or we can turn off that mask. But if you go to one of those numbers and just click and drag, you'll see that it fades off right there. I'm gonna go really high, so you can see that it fades. Let me get in closer also. Okay, you can see it fades off like that. So if I come over here, see how I'm at the beginning where it's not supposed to be revealing anything, but it shows a little bit there. I got to be careful with that because it's supposed to be gone. So here I have to lower it so that it is gone. And I'm going to go lower it all the way. I'm going to do, I'm going to type in there 20. Okay, so I, I don't see it anymore. Okay, but when it comes in, it's a nice little fade into it. Okay, uh, on my screen, it's better than it is in the projector, but there it is. I zoomed in so you can see it a little bit more. There's that fade. And that fade uh, or that feathering, let me go ahead and play. It's a, like a nice little blur effect as well, but it also feels like less uh, robotic or less like digital. It has like maybe like more organic feel to it. Now, at my point here, I'm happy with the overall movement i'm happy with the with the feathering um, at this point Mike, i wonder what would it look like if i added a gradient to this now okay so 
in order for me to do that, I actually have to get back into the sheep layer because I'm on the pre-comp. So if you double click on this bar right here for this layer, double click on that, it will open up the first thing we did, which is the shape layer. Okay. It's right here. So if I select that and I can come back to my fill, I want to show you before and put a gradient there. Okay. And let's just leave it like that. Let's say it's like, I want maybe some kind of like candle effect or something. I don't know. Like, uh, I can grab both sides of this and play with the, that looks pretty interesting there. Okay. So now if I go back to motion graphics two, which is the main thing and hit there, I'm going to see it go from red to an orange where it's like already an orange to a yellow. All right. So that looks cool. I like that. All right. So uh, now I want to work on the timing. Maybe I want this to be a little faster. So I'm going to move that second key closer to the first key. Okay, it comes in pretty quick. You can see it a little faster. All right, not bad. Remember, um, I want to always, not always, but most of the time, easy ease in on that last key so that it doesn't stop abruptly. That looks better. Let me... Uh, Bring it back down. Okay, that looks good. All right. So I have those things happening. <coughs> Excuse me. If I go back to my stripe, the actual uh, thing here, the actual uh, shape layer, I have no animation here, but maybe we can add something to this. Okay. So I'm going to open up um, – let's go – let's see what we can do. We can also change this too, by the way, guys. So if we go to your uh, pen tool and grab – hold on. Let's use the move tool. Maybe I'm confusing it. Oh, I guess not. Okay, well, we'll leave it alone. Okay, so uh, I'll use. Let me show you the pen tool after this. But here is this effect. All right. Now, if I like this and I like how this works, uh, what I can do is we can duplicate these things a few times. So let's say I'm going to move it here. I want to make it a little bit smaller as well. So I'm going to press S for scale. And Shrink it down a little bit like that. All right. And let's say I want to um, use the pan behind tool or the anchor point tool, which is to move this. I'm going to move it and I'm going to place it, let's say, at the end and center of the rectangle on the left side right here. Okay. So <clears throat> I may have to do this again, but I'm going to duplicate this now. And I'm going to use my rotate tool and with my rotate tool, just select it and rotate it outwards like that. Maybe at an angle here, duplicate it again, and we'll do it uh, pretty much straight up. So I'm going to delete this one. Let me delete this one. And let me do that again. And I'm going to hold down shift this time so that it goes perfect like that. All right, that's good. And then duplicate again, Control D, and I'm going to move it. Hold on Shift, so that goes there. Control D again, duplicate, move it. Hold on Shift, so I make a little cross. Then I'm going to come back to this one, um, and then we can duplicate that one more time. And this time, I'm just going to put it right about there. And I'm going to keep this all together. Like I'm getting a lot of the same, excuse me, the same layers, but I'm going to fix that. I'm going to move it so it's right about in there. I'm just going to eyeball this right now. Like, I think that's good. Duplicate that one. Move it down. I see it right there. And duplicate that one, last one. So I make this like the star effect. Okay, so now what I want to do is grab my move tool. And I'm going to shift select all of these so I know what they are right here. Okay. And to help me better 
understand which ones I'm using, I'm going to change the color of these to something like red. Okay, so I know that these are the same. And then I can move this one up and I can keep them all together so that they are um, in, in the group. So the brown ones here are the, the cross, the outside, and the red ones is the X. Okay, now with the X, I'm going to select scale on all of those and make it a little bit smaller so it looks like that. And then what's this? Once I have that shape completed and done, I go back to the beginning and I hit play. Wait, sorry. Oh, wait. After Effects is going to crap on me. Hold on. Let's give it a second. I know it's thinking. This is not a thing for uh, After Effects to be reacting this way. It's, uh, it's again, these computers, you got to make sure you have good computers, people. Okay, if you're going to spend money, invest on anything, your computer is, you know, it makes you money. Okay. Uh, just, just wait a moment. Let me pause this for a second. 